Today, we're going to talk about wildlife biologist certification. We'll go over what it is, the benefits, the steps for getting certified at the associate wildlife biologist level. I'll go through a demonstration and we'll talk about tips involved. First of all, what is certification? So in general, it's an acknowledgement that a person met certain professional standards as verified by that profession's governing body. You've likely heard of governing bodies like American Medical Association for Doctors, American Dental Association for Dentists, and other professions governing bodies. In the case of wildlife biology, certifying wildlife biologists is conducted by the Certification Review Board of the Wildlife Society and approved by the Wildlife Society's president and executive director. There are two levels. There's the associate wildlife biologist level and the certified wildlife biologist level. At the AWB level, what's required is meeting the rigorous educational standards. You have to hold a current membership in the Wildlife Society. You have to adhere to the Wildlife Society's code of ethics. You have to determine three professional references, one of whom must be a certified wildlife biologist, and you pay a small fee. At the certified wildlife biologist level, it requires all those same requirements, plus five years of professional experience, and then every five years, you have to renew your CWB. So that means you need to show the review board that you've conducted 80 hours of continuing education. So what are some of the benefits of getting certified? Holding certification shows commitment and dedication to the profession. You committed yourself to not only completing a bachelor's degree or higher in a wildlife or wildlife related program, but you ensured you met the extra rigorous standards of the Wildlife Society's certification. Many wildlife management agencies and private consulting firms award higher preference when hiring new employees, and many require certification for job advancement within that agency. Meeting the strict requirements of certification adds credibility when testifying in court, in front of policymakers, or speaking in public. Witnesses for court and legislation may also be deemed expert witnesses when they hold advanced degrees like doctorates. However, many doctor degrees are not related to wildlife biology. This is what makes the Wildlife Society's certification helpful in the matters pertaining to wildlife biology and wildlife management. The courts, policymakers, and public know professional certifications carry standards that have been vetted by a governing board and require adhering to code of ethics. Since membership in the professional society is required, and membership requires adhering to the code of ethics, a certified wildlife biologist have a lot to lose if they were to conduct themselves unprofessionally or unethically. Someone with no membership to a professional society or certification would have nothing to lose by acting unethically. So you can see why holding certification is beneficial not only to the profession themselves, professional themselves, but also to society and to the wildlife resource. Additionally, certified wildlife biologists are members of the Wildlife Society and therefore can access the network of members around the world. They can search for members with certain expertise or in specific locations and contact them. Here's some of the steps involved. So first you download, download the application from the website. You want to read through the instructions very carefully before starting to enter your information. I recommend saving it initially and then saving it every single time you work on it. You'll want to identify three references for professional wildlife biologists. One or more of those references must be certified by the Wildlife Society. If you are um, a current or alumni of University of Maryland, you can consider asking Dr. Jennifer Molinax or myself to serve as your CWB reference. You'll know you're a member of the Wildlife Society, not just one of the student chapters or chapters or sections, if you receive the wildlife professional in the mail. 
So you need to be a member of the Wildlife Society at the international level, so not just the local level. You must read and abide by the Code of Ethics. When your application is complete, you email it to certification at wildlife.org. After you graduate, you want to make sure you send your final transcripts to the Wildlife Society. When your application is complete, the Wildlife Society will email you an online secured form for your payment. I'm going to go through a demonstration next. There is a direct link to the application, but just in case the URL changes, say in the next year or so, the way you would get to it is by going to wildlife.org, so their main website, and then learn professional development and certification, and certification programs, and then the associate wildlife biologist application. I will open up the website now. Okay, so you'll want to read through all 35 pages. So I'm going to scroll down to the application itself. Zoom out a little bit so you can see the whole page. So you'll want to enter your first name, if you had a middle name, you would enter it, and your last name. You want a complete mailing address because this is where they would mail the certificate. You'll want to let them know if this is your home or work. You want to fill out your date of birth because they will verify on your transcripts you are who you are. You want to put down an email that you check regularly and different um, phone numbers they can reach you at. And how, then how you want your certificate to appear, how you want your name to appear. Okay, the next section is education. This is where you'll fill out the different schools you attended. So if you attended just one college or university, or did you also attend some community colleges? You'll put down the beginning date and end date you attended. If you obtained a degree, so for instance, at University of Maryland, you likely got a bachelor's degree, but maybe at a community college, maybe you took just a few degrees or just a few classes and didn't earn a degree. So you could put NA here, or maybe you got your associate's degree. So you put your AS here. And then what date was your degree conferred? So enter that here or down here, put NA for your major. So at University of Maryland, this is where you put down say environmental science and policy or environmental science and technology. And we get to the first section, wildlife management. So they're looking for six semester hours or six credits, if you will, of classes. That could be two three hour classes or you might split up classes. But just pay careful attention to the, the course description part. So you need to write down the course description. You need to fill out all of the course requirements. So what's the name of the course? What department is it taught out of? What's the institution or college name? What was that course number? And how many semester hours was it worth? So was it a three semester hour course? Maybe it was ENST 461. Principles of Wildlife Management. So you'd put under course title, Principles of Wildlife Management. For department, you'd put ENST. Institution, you'd put University of Maryland. Course number, you'd put 461. And semester hours, you'd put three. Then you'd write down your course description. You may copy and paste it from Testudo or the course catalog, or you may want to write it yourself. So this area is looking for courses dealing with managing wildlife habitats. And you can continue reading more about that. 
If you feel you are shy, maybe you split up a class, maybe you wanted to use techniques of wildlife management. Um, that's a three credit course, three semester hours. Maybe you wanted to put two hours in this category and one hour in a different category. So that leaves you one semester hour shy. But let's say you were an intern for Maryland Department of Natural Resources dealing with wildlife management. So down here, after all the spots for courses are done, down here you could type in what you did at your internship, if you want your internship to count for partial credit in that category. The next category we come to is wildlife biology. Again, this requires six semester hours, and it adds a little bit more detail. So not only is it requiring six semester hours, they're also looking for one class that's either mammalogy or ornithology or herpetology. So at our school, we offer mammalogy and mammalogy lab. We used to offer ornithology. Recently, there was a student-led ornithology class. We'll see if that's going to become a permanent class or not. That um, hasn't been decided quite yet. Otherwise, you'll want to look around in ENST and the biology departments for other wildlife biology courses. So these are not courses like ichthyology, microbiology, entomology, animal science. So that's not wildlife biology. So you want to just put courses that deal with wildlife biology in this category. Okay, then they're looking for a class in general ecology. So if you're an ENSP or ENST, you're required to take an ecology class. So that'll fit nicely right here. Zoology, you're required to take nine semester hours of zoology or animal related classes. And we've got lots of those kind of classes throughout BSci, Animal Science, ENSP, ENST, MES. We've got lots of zoology classes that can count here. Then in botany, they require nine semester hours, but also you'll notice this highlighted section that they're looking for one course that solely focuses on plant taxonomy or plant identification. So our plant science department offers some courses that could meet that requirement. And then other courses would also fit in this class. You can consider asking for partial credit in other biology courses. So we have evolutionary biology, cellular biology, genetics, where the course is split between zoology and botany. So you could ask for partial credit in those classes as well. Physical sciences, this should be no problem if you're graduating from University of Maryland, because we require so many. They're looking for at least nine semester hours in physical sciences, and they're looking for at least two different disciplines. So that should not be a problem. You could put in general chemistry or organic chemistry, uh, fundamental soil science, physics, lots and lots of classes can go here. Basic stats. So that's your analytic reasoning gen ed. So all University of Maryland students have to take that. So this is a course um, dealing with some kind of basic statistics. There's lots of classes like that. Then we get to quantitative sciences. So these are courses like college level algebra. So not high school level algebra, but college level algebra, biometry, calculus, college level trig, modeling, sampling, things of that nature. Not introductory GIS, an advanced GIS that involves quantitative analysis might be considered, but not introductory GIS. So our students are required in our departments to take at least Calculus I, um, and many of these other classes can be taken as well and still fit in your graduation plan. 
humanities and social sciences. All of our students are required to take these anyway. Minimum nine semester hours. That shouldn't be a problem for any University of Maryland students. Communications. We require a lot of communications classes already. They're looking for 12 semester hours. If a student feels they are a little bit shy in this category, perhaps they took nine semester hours of communications classes, um, they can always ask for other professional experiences to count. Uh, perhaps they gave a poster or a talk at a conference. Uh, and there are other, other ways that they can ask for, for credit in case they're missing one class. So I can't just, the uh, final paper in any class. It has to spend a lot more time focusing on communication than just saying the final paper of a class. Policy, administration, and law. So this is the category where they're looking for six hours dealing with wildlife policy or wildlife law or it could be as general as natural resources policy and law. So ENSP for our Environmental Science and Policy Program. Um, so they have a lot of courses that could be used here. All right. Um, if you are working on a thesis, so perhaps you're one of our four plus one students would put that here and that your your anticipated graduation date and the title of your thesis that you're you're working on but you don't have to fill this out this is an optional category publications also an optional category so you can leave that blank if you don't have publications other involvements perhaps you belong to our student chapter of the wildlife society perhaps you're an officer of our student chapter or if you're involved in other ways. Here is the section where you put your professional references. So all three references need to be wildlife biologists. At least one needs to be a certified wildlife biologist, but certainly all three of them might be. You'll want to put down their name, the company they work for, their email address, their current position title, their mailing address, preferably at work, preferably their work phone number, and whether or not they're a CWB. So you will want to discuss your application with them, perhaps review a draft of it with them so they're familiar with what you're putting down, and maybe they'll want to make some edits for you. But you want to certainly contact them to ask permission if you can use them as a reference, and ask them what contact information they prefer for the certification review board to use as they're contacting them. Then you want to make sure that you've included enough hours. You want to verify that you put the complete contact information for your references, that you're going to have your final transcript sent along. If you had a thesis or dissertation um, that you were wanting to count as experience, including those abstracts, but that's only if applicable. Then you want to verify that you are complying with the Code of Ethics. If you do not comply, you will need to provide a letter explaining why not. Then you sign and date. As I said earlier, you'll want to save this often and then perhaps review it with your references that in. So that concludes the demonstration portion. So now let's talk about some tips. So not only do I recommend filling out each section meeting the minimum standards, so if it asks for six semester hours, make sure you put six hours, but I would recommend going above and beyond. So maybe even put seven, eight, or nine semester hours in that same category. Pay very close attention to detail. I've seen many applicants 
um, leave off their zip code in their mailing address, or they forget to sign or date, or their references are in a different profession instead of wildlife biology, or they put an incomplete number of classes in a category and they don't justify why they feel professional experience would count in lieu of a missing class, or they don't meet the specific requirements, like wildlife biology has to have one of those ology classes. And the botany category requires one class in plant tax or plant ID. So make sure you pay close attention to detail in every single section. And I mentioned earlier, you could split up a course. So say evolutionary biology, so BSI 160, 161, or genetics. So BSI 222. Maybe you want to split that course into two different categories. So the zoology category and the botany category. So if it's a four credit class, you could ask for two out of four credits in one category and two out of four credits in the other category. But you can't ask for four credits in both categories. I mentioned you can ask for professional experience to count in a category if you're missing a class but you need to justify why at the end of that section. Occasionally, course descriptions in Testudo were um, not reflective of the nature of the course or go into much detail about the course. But for example, our Woody Pink Plants class doesn't explain that you learn how to use a dichotomous key, you key out over 200 species, and you learn over 200 species of trees in our area. They may not go into that level of detail. So the board doesn't know you learned how to use a DICOT key and that the course dealt with ID. So you may want to write your own course description. You should know that there's a 10 year time clock from the date when you're approved for AWB until you need to upgrade to the CWB level. You have a 10 year time clock in which to obtain five years of professional work. What's considered professional work? Well, certainly um, working as wildlife biologist or wildlife manager, um, but also working towards a graduate degree can count for partial credit as a professional wildlife biologist, as long as the degree is related, hence needing to send in an abstract for the board to review. So here's the maximum amount of professional work experience credit that's awarded. A master's degree can earn one year of professional wildlife biologist experience. A PhD can earn two years. And a master and a PhD can earn three years. So that means you would still need to get two more years as a professional wildlife biologist. So two years of working plus the master's and PhD, you need to do all that within the time year. 10 year time frame. And remember, after the CWB is approved, the renewal happens every five years and having to show 80 hours of continuing education. And we do that by filling out a log that verifies we attended things like conferences, trainings, classes, and other continuing ed opportunities. Wildlife biology and management is an extremely unique and worthwhile field. I do want to warn you that it's very competitive, so you'll want to stand apart from your peers. Certification is a great way to help with that and provides many, many more benefits than just making yourself more marketable. It's not easy or automatic. It will take days, even weeks, to review, complete your application, and submit it. It will take months until you hear the final decision. I'm happy to help current Terps and alumni who want to learn more, want an early edit of their application, or want to consider asking me to serve as their professional reference. You can contact me anytime at shannonp at umb.edu. If you have any questions about certification in general, feel free to email certification at wildlife.org. If you have questions about the Wildlife Society in general, feel free to email TWS at wildlife.org. I hope you found this video helpful.